Okay, um, today let's look at the formation of covalent bonds. Yesterday we did ionic bonds. Um, so once again, don't forget that uh, there's the octet rule, where atoms will react in such a way as to get a, a full eight electrons in their valent shell. Um, we're using Lewis model here, so yes, in the background of our mind, we know it's an S2P6 getting you eight electrons, but Lewis doesn't care about that. Um, all he knows is eight electrons, and so we draw them as dots, and we try to get eight around the nucleus and not worry about how or why. Um, when we had a metal and a nonmetal, the metal was had a very few very loosely held electrons that were easy to take away, which worked for the, the metal because it got down to the core below it. Nonmetal had strong attraction, took the electrons away, filled its shell, everyone was happy. Um, but what happens if you bring two nonmetals near each other? Now you get a situation like some relationships out there where both atoms want to take electrons and nobody wants to give away an electron. So now what do you do? Well, you form a covalent bond by overlapping electron clouds. And again, we say sharing those electrons. In reality, they're kind of fighting over them. Um, notice down here they mentioned the duet thing for hydrogen or technically helium, although again, it's never going to be in a compound. But for hydrogen, you only need two electrons in the valence shell because that's in 1s2 and it's full. Every other atom needs eight electrons. So um, let's, I don't want to do that one yet. Let me show you, I got to find, there it is, um, a simple formation of a covalent bond here. Let's form diatomic chlorine. So here's a chlorine atom with, S2, P5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 valence electrons. And you'll notice the glaring empty spot right here where there should be another electron. Well, let's give it another chlorine molecule, uh, atom. So the two chlorine atoms in the same container bump into each other. Here's the other chlorine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. Some of these dots are kind of tiny, but I think you can see them. Notice how these two electrons end up being paired up. One comes from the chlorine on the left. The other comes from the chlorine on the right. Doesn't really matter who came from where, but the key is you have paired electrons all around the chlorines. This pair right here is one that's shared between the two because each atom brought one electron with it. Um, that right there is the covalent bond. So notice a covalent bond is a physical thing. It's actually these two electrons that are being shared between the two atoms. In reality, of course, they, we draw these dots here, but in reality, it's an electron cloud that is completely delocalized across the entire molecule. So that, well, really badly drawn electron cloud I did is these two electrons right here. Lewis shows him as dots. In reality, they're a blurry cloud around the two. Sometimes people think, I mean, these electrons, these, these are part of it too. They're not. These electrons over here belong only to this chlorine. So their electron cloud, I won't draw and confuse the diagram, but these two electrons, their electron cloud is just right here surrounding this chlorine. Same for those electrons and those electrons. They're all surrounding this chlorine. These electrons are all surrounding the other chlorine. But these two electrons, they're the cloud I drew. They're surrounding both chlorines. They're the share electrons. Um, just for terminology's sake here, because we're going to use this later, these two electrons that we shared are called a shared pair. They're also called a bonding pair because, well, obviously they're used to make the covalent bond. Um, so that's that. Um, the other electrons, these over here, two, four, six on this chlorine, two, four, six on that chlorine. Um, they're called unshared pairs because they're, well, not being shared. See how creative we are in our naming. They're also called lone pairs, which is a very common term for them. So notice each chlorine has one, two, three lone pairs. And then they have a shared pair that they share between them. Lone pairs belong to an individual atom. Shared pairs belong to both atoms. So again, that's just some terminology for you there. Um, let's get back to our PowerPoint. Now, um, they're going to do this same kind of thing I just did there for hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen has only one dot. Oxygen has six valence electrons. 
one, two, three, four, start pairing up, five, six, right? Notice there's an empty spot right here that it could share with that hydrogen. But what about that empty spot down there? Hydrogen ran out of electrons, has no more to give, but there's other hydrogens out there. You don't have to react with just one. So another hydrogen comes in and hooks up right here into this spot. And so you get oxygen bonded to two separate hydrogens, as you see down here. Now, notice, a little tricky here, the empty spot was down on the bottom, but they put the hydrogen off on the right side. Does that matter? Absolutely not. Um, uh, Lewis isn't trying to show us the shape of the molecule at all. Uh, he has no clue about shapes of molecules. That's coming up in a future lesson. All he's showing us is who's bonding with who and how many of each atom is going to be involved in, in the bonding. So if you would have shown your H2O with the HOH at an angle like you see me doing with the cursor here, that's fine. If you show it straight across like at the bottom here, just linear like that, that's fine. Both structures are identical. There's an oxygen connected to two separate hydrogen atoms. Whether you bend it or straight is totally irrelevant according to Lewis because he's not trying to show us the shape of the molecule. He has no clue what the shape of the molecule really is. Later, we're gonna have to learn about that. But again, that's future you problem. For the Lewis structure, as long as you have one oxygen in the middle and an H on either side, you got a proper structure. Notice here you have a shared pair right here, a bonding pair, we could say, and a bonding pair or shared pair right here. And then up here, you have a lone pair on the oxygen down here, you have a, another lone pair on the oxygen. Hydrogen never gets any lone pairs because it's full with two electrons. So hydrogen always forms one bond and done, no lone pairs. Every other atom is going to need eight pairs around, or I'm sorry, four pairs around itself to get to eight electrons. So how many bonds does that mean? Depends on how many open spots you got. Oxygen has two open spots, so it's gonna bond with two other atoms. Um, nitrogen has three empty spots, it's going to bond with three other atoms. So this is fairly straightforward. So that's when you do this, and again, these atoms with the dots around, we call Lewis um, diagrams. Um, when you build a molecule in this way, and we've built a simple diatomic chlorine, and now we build an H2O molecule, these are called Lewis structures. And the, again, the point of the Lewis structure is to show you how the bonding is happening. There's a single bond holding hydrogen to oxygen. There's another single bond holding hydrogen to oxygen. And there's some lone pairs on the oxygen. Those actually matter, as we'll see later in the chapter. Um, they just point out here that you have an octet. And while well, hydrogen doesn't need an octet, it only needs two. So you can call it a duet if you like. Um, notice the shared pairs are counted twice. Oxygen counts them as part of its electrons. But hydrogen over here counts them as part of its electrons as well. So in a sense, every time you form a bond, you're kind of counting those electrons twice. Each atom claims them as their own. Now, notice that's not optimal. Oxygen would love to have eight just to itself. So if I give it a chance to ionically bond and steal electrons from someone, it's going to jump at the chance. It's going to dump hydrogen, go with the sodium or whatever, and, and form an ionic bond. But if it doesn't give that opportunity, then it'll at least go with the second best situation where it's sharing the electrons to get its eight. So again, it's better than having not eight, having only the six it came in with. Um, so both atoms are now stable. They both get their full shell at the cost of sharing with some other atom. That's a covalent bond. That's exactly what covalent bonding is all about. Again, notice we say they're sharing these in reality Hydrogen's nucleus is trying to pull them its way. Oxygen's nucleus is trying to pull it that way. Um, neither of them win the battle, and so they end up sharing. If this had been like a sodium with very, very low attraction, oxygen would just win the battle and take it away. Um, but that's going to be tomorrow's lesson, dealing with the details of that. Um, here they go into the terminology, showing you it's a bonding pair, also called, again, a shared pair and this being a lone pair or an unshared pair. Notice down here, what we often will do, the lone pairs we draw as dots, just like we've been doing, but the bonds often, instead of drawing them as a pair of dots, to emphasize the bond, we just draw it as a dash. 
So here's a, a, a better way or the more common way of, of drawing a Lewis structure for a molecule like water. You got your dashes for the bonds and your dots for the lone pairs. Each dot is an electron, so you got to pair them up, a pair here and a pair there. Each dash is a bond, which means two electrons. So be careful when you're counting electrons around your oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six for that bond, seven, eight for that bond. The bonds are two electrons each, not one electron each. Just be careful of that. Now, they show you diatomic chlorine here. Um, the next slide, they're going to consider a, a situation where you kind of run short of electrons. So let me do it my way rather than their way. I'm going to erase my chlorine here. Don't need to save my beautiful artwork. Let's try to make diatomic oxygen. So there's an oxygen atom, and then there's another oxygen atom. Notice oxygen atoms are S2P4, total of six electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you bring in the other oxygen. One pairs that up, two, three, four, let's do five, six there. Okay, well, they share their electrons, they form their bonds, all is well, except when you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This oxygen is short yet. It, it shared electrons, but it still doesn't have enough. Same for this oxygen over here, two, four, six, seven electrons. Well, that's a problem. So what do you do? Well, notice if you share electrons, you get to count them twice. Let's take advantage of that. We're essentially two electrons short here. One electron there, one electron there. If you're short electrons, you want to be able to double count them so you can act like you have more. That's exactly what they do. Let's take this electron right here and that electron right there and shift them into the middle and form another bond. Now, that means if I put them in the middle, there they are forming another bond. And let's see here, where's the erase tool? You see I don't use um, paint very much. Well, there it is. I can erase those electrons now. And now I still have the same total electrons. I'll go back to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's still six for each atom that are here, a total of 12 electrons. But now notice you got a bond here and a bond there. You got two bonds formed between the oxygens. And each oxygen gets to count those electrons. So the oxygen on the left counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. It has its octet. Oxygen on the right, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has its octet. So what happened here? Now you have two bonds. We can write that as O, bond, bond, another O. And then you got a lone pair, another lone pair, and same for the other oxygen. So similar to before, we formed a bond, but in this case we had to form more than one. We had to form two bonds between the same atoms. This is called a double bond. What we did before was obviously called a single bond. The normal state of affairs is you get a single bond. If you're ever doing these Lewis structures and you run short of electrons, there's not enough to go around for everyone, just form a double bond somewhere, and then you'll hopefully have enough. If not, we can form a triple bond, which, well, let's see how that works. So let's start going here. I'm almost out of time, so I'll finish this quickly. There they show the double bond on the oxygen. Again, they show both electrons over here. It doesn't really matter where you put them but you shift them in and you form your double bond right there. And there's the double bond. If we want to do it with nitrogen, notice with nitrogen, there's only five for each atom. So 10 electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10. We're short two here and short there. So we're short a lot of electrons. Let's form a triple bond. Two, whoops. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Everyone's happy. They got their full octets. So if you run short of electrons, form double bonds. If you form, you run, you keep running short, form a triple bond. See how that goes. We'll do this only for very small atoms so far, molecules so far. We'll do bigger ones later. Okay, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. I'm going to stop here because I'm almost out of time. 
um, I'll give you some tax 